Welcome back to another Daily Try video. And we're back to the women for this one as they've got an incredible race ahead of them next Friday. Lucy Charles Barkley, hot off second place in Kona, is defending her title against some of the biggest names in women's triathlon. One name that she won't be defending it against and in which every female athlete will be grateful she's not on the start list is the on-fire Ashley Gentle. However, this is still a stacked race. With Taylor Nibb confirmed to be racing, Emma Pallant Brown, Jackie Herring, Holly Lawrence, Flora Duffy. Oh, yeah, that's right, you heard it right. Flora Duffy is racing thanks to her Ironman wildcard slot. Oh, yeah, and then you also throw in Paula Findlay, Tamara Jewett, Ellie Salthouse, and about 50 other women. And you might have the most interesting middle distance race of the year. I think I'm even more excited for the women's race this year than the men's. And thankfully, like Kona, they've got their own broadcast to themselves next Friday. Okay, on to the predictions. Drum roll, please. And with the women, I'm going to go the other way around. At number five, I've got Holly Lawrence. This former 70.3 world champion and current rank number 10 is going to be aiming for this race like no other and will have a great all-around day, especially after her recent performances at the US Open and the Collins Cup but she is just lacking the world's best cutting edge at the moment and was five minutes back from Taylor Nip in Dallas. At number four, I've got Paula Finley. Paula has lots of motivation coming into this race as she wasn't able to compete in 2021 and with her off performance at the US Open, she's an all-rounder who can swim and ride with the best. We'll have to see where her run lands her in St. George. Now onto the podium, and I've got Olympic gold medalist, Flora Duffy. Flora has only had two middle distance races behind her this year, but has been training for it for much of the year and has now got the experience needed to grab a great result. She was clearly disappointed with her sixth place in Dallas, and I think she desperately wants a good result to prove to herself that she can rank among the top women in this new format for her. She'll be looking for a great PTO score as well, as this will be her third and final long distance race of the year. In the silver medal position, I'm going with Lucy Charles Barkley. I hate to put Lucy in second again, just because she's been there so many times before, but I think with Kona being so soon and all the travel, plus the injury that kept her out of most of the season, I just don't see her beating my number one pick. She is, however, going to have another stellar race, but not quite as good as her remarkable demolition last year. In first place, I'm going now onto the dark horses for the women. First, not so dark horse for me, I've got Jackie Herring who had a blistering race in May at Ironman 70.3 Chattanooga, but hasn't been able to repeat it since. I expect a fast run for her, landing her in a great position. Secondly, I've got Tamara Jewett. Tamara, like Jackie, is a phenomenal runner. And since she is fairly new to professional women's racing, I think each race she is just leveling up her biking and swimming so much and without Ashley Gentle here, you can expect her to have the fastest run split and it will be extremely fun to watch her climb up the ladder of places on the run. Lastly, I'm going with Imogen Simmons. This bronze medalist at the 2019 World Cup in Nice has been going remarkably well on her return to fitness from injury. After winning last weekend at Challenge Majorca, she's ready for this one. Woo, that was a lot to get through. I bet you're sick of listening to my voice. I know I am. Now let me hear yours, kind of, by dropping me a comment below, letting me know who your top picks are. As always, thank you so much for watching. My name's Travis. I hope you subscribe and check out this channel every day for more hype videos, race highlights, and much, much more.